Bro, nice car. Is this a Peugeot? Bro, it's a Peugeot. It's a brand that some people may have a hard time pronouncing or even spelling. It's a premium French brand that's positioned a step higher than Toyotas and Mitsubishis and a step lower than luxury brands like BMW and Mercedes. This is the Peugeot 3008. Is it worth your money? Let's find out. So the first thing that surprised me about the 3008 is actually the price tag. This sells for 2 million pesos, which may seem steep compared to Chinese crossovers, but compared to Japanese crossovers of the same size, it's actually reasonably priced. It's cheaper than the RAV4, and it's just a little bit more expensive than the Nissan X-Trail. If you pay 2 million pesos for a crossover, you'd expect its looks to reflect its price tag. And I think the 3008 does it quite nicely. It looks like an expensive Euro car. This is the new facelifted model, and the new fascia looks very intricate. It gets this new frameless grille with these um, floating chrome accents. And you have these bits that stretch out to the side. I think it's a very eye-catching and very unique looking design. It gets LED projector headlamps, and these vertical things right here are DRLs which are designed to look like fangs. Over here, you get a prominent chin painted in silver. The 3008 gets a 1.6 liter four-cylinder turbocharged engine that produces 165 horsepower and 240 newton meters of torque. Thankfully, it doesn't get a CVT. It gets a proper six-speed automatic transmission. The 3008 is a compact crossover. It's just a bit smaller than the Ford Territory and the BMW X3 but it's bigger than the Geely Cool Ray and the Subaru XV. So this comes in four different colors. You have pearl white, Amazonite gray, Nero black, and this right here is metallic copper. Okay, so it gets these sharp looking 18 inch wheels wrapped in 225, 55 continental tires. It gets disc brakes at the front and also at the back. It has a pretty athletic profile. The belt line is high and it's upswept, giving it a more dynamic look. The logo of Peugeot is a lion, and these taillights right here are designed to resemble lion's claws. So these are LEDs right here. Of course, you get the Peugeot logo at the center, and you get dual fake exhaust tips. The 3008 also comes with a power lift gate, which you can open using your foot, like so. So in here, you get 591 liters of cargo space with the second row seats up and if you fold the second row seats you can get as much as 1670 liters of cargo space so if you need more space you can actually so you can actually move the loading floor lower the trade-off is that you don't get a flat loading surface but you do get more vertical space So underneath you get a, a spare tire with some tools. Overall, I really like how it looks. It looks classy, it looks expensive, but it also looks youthful. If you're in your 20s to 30s, no one's gonna think that you're driving your dad's car if they see you in this. By the way, the exterior looks quirky, but the interior looks even quirkier. But we'll talk about that later. If I were to give the styling a rating relative to other crossovers in this price bracket, I'd give it a solid 9.5. The only other crossover that comes close at 2 million pesos is the Mazda CX-5 in Soul Crystal Red. But I'm a guy and sometimes guys have different tastes compared to girls. Let's take a second opinion. I'm supposed to pick up the girlfriend in a couple of minutes. Um, let's see what she thinks of the 3008. So I had to pick up the girlfriend at Subic, which is about a two-hour drive from QC. 
So this would be a good opportunity to test the road trip merits of the 3008. She seems impressed, but I'll ask her to rate it tomorrow morning so she can get a better look at it. By the way, here in the Bosch parking lot of Marriott Hotel with Porsches and other luxury cars, the 3008 doesn't look out of place. One ten. Okay, so right so quality. Pretty. Same ride, 1 to 10? Suave. Air airplane? Yeah. Okay, 1 to 10? 10 to 10! okay. This interior doesn't look like anything else in the market. It has this futuristic driver-centric design that wraps around the driver. So everything here is angled towards the driver. These, these switches over here and this higher center console give you a cockpit-like feeling. I think it's a very eye-catching looking design and it's not just nice to look at it's also nice to the touch like almost everything here is uh, covered in soft touch materials you have these metallic looking accents <clears throat> you have premium leather so I'm not sure what kind of leather this is but it looks and feels premium you get plenty of adjustments as well of course you can move it forward and back you can adjust the recline angle you can adjust the seat height, the thigh support, but I think the most impressive thing here is the lumbar support. Of all the cars that I've driven, this has the most aggressive lumbar support. As you can see, this is very swollen right here. It's so swollen that it's almost the same level as the bolstering. So one thing that's definitely quirky here is that you get this denim-like fabric on the dashboard and on the door sidings. Now, I'm not sure if it's actual denim, but it looks and feels like it. And this, I think this is the first time that I've seen denim in a car interior. I think it kind of works. It definitely makes the interior look unique. So one more unique feature of the Peugeot 3008 is you don't look through the steering wheel to see the instrument cluster. Instead, you look above it. I happen to like the setup because no matter which position your steering wheel is at, you can always see the instrument cluster. And another quirky feature of the Peugeot 3008 is the steering wheel. I mean, just look at it. Aside from its small size, it also has a flat top and a flat bottom. So it's shaped like a like an American football. It's wrapped in leather, and you also got these metallic accents here. The car gets um, lane keep assist, and unlike some systems which just beep at you, this will actually try to keep you in your lane. So if you try to change lanes without using your turn signal, it will actually try to resist your steering input. It's just enough resistance to keep you from accidentally leaving your lane, but not so much that it will actually prevent you from steering the car. So I think that's a very helpful feature. Um, it also has blind spot warning. It doesn't have rear cross traffic alert though and adaptive cruise control. It gets a wireless phone charger. It gets an electronic parking brake with auto hold. You get dual zone climate control. You get a 10 inch screen. It has Apple CarPlay. It has Android Auto. It looks like it has a top down view camera, but it has a very unique way of displaying this top down view camera. So it doesn't get cameras all around the car. You only get one camera at the back. And what it does is when you put the car in reverse, it paints a picture of your surroundings. And this is what it looks like. So it's a good way of maximizing value without actually adding more hardware to the car. So the shifter is also very BMW-like. This is electronic. You have to press this button on the side to put it in drive and reverse. To put it in park, just press this button. And to put it in manual mode, just press this button over here. The vehicle, by the way, has paddle shifters. 
I like how these buttons over here look, but whenever I pick my phone, I tend to hit one of these buttons. The space here is pretty tight. Yeah, so in terms of storage, the armrest opens like a BMW. It's split at the center. And inside, you have plenty of storage. So you can see it's pretty deep here. And you also have a cooler in here for cooling your drinks. Uh, speaking of drinks, you have two cup holders over here and you have these spring-loaded tabs so you can fit smaller cups without them jiggling around. Yeah, in terms of headroom, it's, it's, I have no complaints. I'm 5'8 and I have plenty of headroom. You have different driving modes here and you can select those driving modes using this knob over here. And you also get this panoramic sunroof. And at night, it looks especially nice because it gets ambient lighting. You get plenty of ambient lighting here. Okay, so here at the back seat, space is not a problem. I have plenty of legroom. Headroom is okay. The panoramic sunroof eats a bit of headroom, but I think it's worth it. Um, this is the best place to appreciate the panoramic sunroof because you can see the full length of it. And if I look up, I see nothing but sky. It extends all the way to the top of my head. So over here you get two air vents, one USB port. You get a center armrest with two cup holders. And you also get Isofix tethers over here. As a road trip vehicle, it definitely passes the test. Like I said before, the seats are very comfortable, perfect for long drives. I especially like the lumbar support. At its maximum setting, you get crazy amounts of lumbar support, which I like. The NVH levels are on a different level compared to more affordable crossovers. It is very quiet inside the cabin. Everything feels buttery smooth. It's so quiet that sometimes you get surprised when you look at the speedometer because it doesn't feel like you're going as fast as you actually are. The 1.6 liter engine provides decent power. It can propel the 3008 from 0 to 100 kph in just 8.4 seconds, which is quicker than most crossovers under 2 million pesos, except for the GD Cool Ray. I love the steering of the car. Aside from the fact that the steering wheel is very small and sporty, the steering ratio is also very quick and it feels very direct. Uh, the lane keep assist system can be alarming at first if you're not used to it, but when you get used to it, you'll be glad that you have it. The suspension is a bit soft, so there's a bit of body roll, but it's never too excessive. As for fuel consumption, it is pretty good. On the way to Subic, I got 16.1 kpl with a relatively heavy foot. On the way back, I got 18.2 kpl, driving like a granny. In the city, with moderate traffic, 9.5 kpl is easily achievable. I've driven a lot of cars from different brands. This is my first time driving a Peugeot. And overall, I'm quite impressed. It's loaded with features. It has a premium interior, a very stylish exterior, and a price tag that's actually not too bad for a premium European brand. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on my next video.